I'm Wang Hongguan, a surgeon of hepatobiliary surgery of Chinese PLA General Hospital. It's one of the biggest hospitals in China, and there are five sections in hepatobiliary surgery department, including hepatic surgery, biliary surgery, pancreatic surgery, minimally invasive surgery, and liver transplantation surgery. And I'm in charge of minimally invasive surgery section. In my section, I perform laparoscopic hepatectomy, laparoscopic cholecystectomy, and laparoscopic common bile duct exploration, and so on. About twelve years ago, I began to use an old type of BK ultrasound system with laparoscopic transducer to scan the biliary tract during laparoscopic cholecystectomy. And I found it was very useful for biliary tract detection. Since then, I've tried to apply ultrasound to other laparoscopic surgeries, such as laparoscopic hepatectomy and pancreatectomy. Through these practices, I did get some useful experience. For the unresectable hepatic tumor, thermal ablation was proved to be an effective therapy. Compared with percutaneous ablation. Laparoscopic ultrasound-guided ablation is safer and more precise. There are some papers introducing the values of laparoscopic ultrasound-guided hepatic tumor ablation. Santem Brogio from University of Milan said laparoscopic RFA of HCC proved to be a safe and effective technique, at least in terms of the short and mid-term results. This technique may be indicated in selected cases of HCC when percutaneous RFA is very difficult or contraindicated. Sean Dat Lee from Seoul National University said laparoscopic RFA for hepatic malignancies proved to be a safe and effective treatment. Also, this procedure is indicated for lesions that are not amenable to percutaneous RFA or liver resection. Till Herbert from University of Cologne said, "Laparoscopic RFA is a feasible and reliable therapy for unresectable HCCs in patients with cirrhosis. The laparoscopic RFA combines the advantage of a minimally invasive procedure concerning liver dysfunction with the ability of an accurate intraoperative staging by laparoscopic ultrasound. In order to do laparoscopic ultrasound-guided ablation." I've tried different brands of laparoscopic transducers in recent years, and I believe BK is the best one. The image quality is perfect. You won't miss any details of hidden lesions, even those smaller than five millimeters in diameter, which makes surgeons more confident. I like the design of BK's laparoscopic transducer very much. The tip of the transducer can be bent in four directions. Which makes laparoscopic scanning much easier than others. The most important feature of BK's transducer is that there is a dedicated puncture channel on the top. When doing the laparoscopic puncture, surgeons can use the puncture guideline to aim the target lesion, then insert the needle through the puncture channel and hit the target lesion with ease. That makes laparoscopic ultrasound-guided hepatic tumor ablation less difficult. The current indications for laparoscopic ablation as a curative therapy are similar to that for percutaneous ablation. Three or fewer tumors measuring smaller than three centimeters in diameter, or a solitary tumor with a major axis of less than five centimeters and liver function of child pew class A or B. Although curative ablation is possible for tumors measuring larger than two centimeters in diameter. There is no clear evidence that ablation can cure hypervascular HCC larger than three centimeters in diameter. HCC with extrahepatic metastases and vascular or biliary invasion should be excluded from the indication. Similar to percutaneous ablation, the contraindications for laparoscopic ablation include jaundice, refractory ascites, and a tendency for hemorrhage. However. Ablation with laparoscopic guidance is highly recommended for patients with a relative contradiction for percutaneous ablation, such as lesions adjacent to gastrointestinal tract, 
gallbladder, bile duct, or heart. Next, I will show you a case of laparoscopic hepatic tumor ablation. This patient was suffered from HCC with severe hepatic cirrhosis. You can observe the tumor from the surface of liver. Preoperative examination indicate that this patient cannot tolerate hepatectomy. Percutaneous ablation was also contraindicated because the tumor was very adjacent to stomach. So for this patient, laparoscopic ablation was the ideal solution, which was safe, curative, and minimally invasive. At first, we should use a laparoscopic transducer to scan the liver. That will help us to understand the spatial structure around the HCC lesion. After identifying the location of the lesion, we could insert an RFA electrode through abdominal wall accordingly and place the tip of the electrode into the punctured channel which is mounted on the top of the transducer. With the help of puncture guideline, we could easily aim the target lesion. The RFA electrode could be clearly displayed on the screen. That enabled us to decide whether the electrode was correctly inserted into the lesion. Then we activated the radio frequency generator. You can observe a large amount of bubbles appearing in the lesion area, which indicated that the lesion was being heated. After several minutes, the echogenic signal of lesion area became very weak, which indicated that the lesion was destroyed. In order to do radical ablation, we should insert another two electrodes to ablate the margin of the lesion. The second electrode was placed on the superior margin, and the third electrode was placed on the inferior margin. After all of these procedures, we can observe that the surface of the lesion was coagulated. Then we scanned the liver again with laparoscopic transducer. Around the lesion, there was a hypoechogenic ring zone about one centimeter in width, and no color Doppler signal could be captured there. It was the safety margin of ablation. That's my personal experience, and I believe that you can make it.